too hungry for success. Today we play England and Tunisia. Uh, we play England at Wembley. It's a sellout, as you can see. 90,000 tickets sold out of a 90,000 capacity. I think England are expecting to absolutely dominate this game. And to be fair, they probably will. So I'm hoping that we just don't get absolutely bitch slapped. And then we play Tunisia five days later. So that's a game I'm hoping we can do well in. We'll see. This is the team we're going to play. Uh, we're going to stick. Maybe not. There's actually people who are quite tired. And I didn't realize they were so tired. Um, we'll actually put... Uh, no. No handling. Um, no, you can play. Quinn, no bulls. No, you can stay. Um, Clayton, you can play Wilkinson instead. Clayton might come on and make his debut. Clayton is the Tottenham centre back who I wanted to join us for a while. Came up and decided he was going to play for Ireland. Just out of nowhere, popped up, didn't even ask him. He just turned around and went, I think I'll play for Ireland. So, I'm going to try and get him on at some stage during this game to cap time so he can never leave us again. Um, other than that, I think we're just going to play it. We're going to play with this 11. Um, Bazunu is in going. Yeah, Bazunu in goal. Blackwell and Quinn play as our wing backs. Wilkinson and Brennan, Captain Brennan, as our centre backs. Cullen and Clark in central midfield. O'Hanlon, Grant, and o and Connell, not O'Connell, just Connell, in behind Troy Parrott. On the bench, we do have a one debutante, uh, Clayton, as I said. Other than that, I'm pretty sure the team is as it was in the last game. I am considering Luke Connell as probably our one of our first players to come off. Um, they're playing with John Stones as centre back. There was this guy Bond, was the one that played their last international game, I think, or their expected lineup had this Man United wonder kid. Well, he's not wonder kid. He's twenty six years old now, but some beast. That they had playing at centre back, who they've decided not to play today. So I'll take that. Uh, they've basically lined up to stop us by the looks of it. Or if not, that's the way I'm looking at it. They've decided they're going to try and stop us. Um, we're underdogs, it suits us. It's going to be passion to try and get a bit of life into the lads. And I'm hoping. That we can do something. Um, yeah, if you're not getting results, it's incredibly important to stick to game plan. Uh, don't want to make predictions because I don't want us to get bitch slapped and for me to turn around and go, we have to be considered favourites. Because we're definitely not considered favourites. We are a lot harder than they are, which is interesting. There was. Um, a Man United striker who came up as being someone I should call into the first team who's actually playing for the under 19s so I was like mm, maybe I won't it's something bachelor um, I had a look at his attributes and I was for some reason I went into his information he's supposedly the next uh, Rashford so won't be having him on free kick duty <laughs> oh okay it's not funny. Ah, uh, James Garner absolutely smashes it. He's gone blonde. His players change his hair colour to blonde. His picture continues to be a black hair, brown hair. He's he's changed his hair. And um, that was just too easy. I'm expecting this to be an absolute rout because it was the last time we played them, but we were at home the last time. I might go full. Screamy, screamy mode for at half time and say it's not good. This isn't good enough. Um, depending on what the score is going in at half time. Oh, Cullen just left standing. Phil Foden just smashes the ball past Bazunu. Yeah. Um, part of me thinks we should probably go a bit more defensive. 
We're never going to. My brain is like, it's probably a better option. That way we don't get smashed. Because as it is right now, Kosovo have a better goal difference than, than we do. I don't, I still don't understand how Armenia beat England. Like, how did they... How did they beat England? We haven't had a single shot on target. We're playing a controlled possession. And we have less possession. Hmm. Hmm. We've had 12 fouls. We're winning on fouls. So we're doing well. This is just not going well. It's just... This is just... Hmm. Yeah, I'm not happy. Um, a lot more to come from you. Okay, everyone is fired up or motivated. Luke O'Connell, prove a point. That, oh, exactly what I wanted you to say to the guy who's on a yellow card. You know, what's better to say to a, a midfielder on a yellow card? Oh, I want you to prove a point. Prove you should be starting this game because you were the one that we originally didn't intend on playing. I was going to play Callum out at, but I decided last minute to change to Connell. Um, ah, fuck it, why not show a bit of passion, let's. Bizunu is somehow playing a 7.1. Don't know how, but alright. I'll take it. Um, yeah, we're going to have to make a change. There's so many tired players. Uh, Grant's playing terribly, so ring on Purcell. Um, Quinn is shattered, so I'll move Blackwell to the left because Bull is quite tired as well. And I bring on Martin Clayton for his debut, but I'm going to move Wilkinson to right back. And I think we'll leave it at that for now. And see if that makes any bit of a difference. And when it doesn't, we can just figure something else out. Reese Nelson. Looks like Rashford headed it away. Iceland and Kosovo are drawing. This group is very strange. It's England out front and then there's the rest of us just kind of taking points off each other. Yeah, we're going to demand more. I think we we should be playing better, to be fair. Uh, I'm going to take... Actually, my column's shattered. I'm going to move Parrot to the right. Set him to inside forward. I'm going to bring on Noel Russell, because why not? Why not bring on three young players in a very big game? To be fair... Um, O'Hanlon is only 18, I think, so he's still really quite young. Connell whips it to the back. Clayton! <gasps> he scored on his debut against his, against his birth nation. He was born in England, right? He was. He was born in South Park. Never heard of it. But he scores on his international debut against England. <sighs> oh. And it was from the edge of the area. Oh, he's only gone and done it. Come on, lads. Very attacking for the last three minutes. Troy Parrot heads it away. Yeah, it's just completely, a complete and utter waste of time. But. I'm going to spend more time doing this than we're going to spend actually doing anything. So, actually, I make you the Mazella, and I make you the box to box because you can run about a bit, run about a bit, and let's make the two of you complete wing backs. Yeah, that looks like a tactic. Come on, lads! Somebody stop him. Oh, they brought on Bond. No wonder they're doing so well. Phil Foden going for his hat-trick. Chilwell. Back to Foden. And Foden. Oh, it's... 
Russia does it, does it, does it, does it. Colin dinks it forward to Wilkinson. Gets hacked clear. This is the... Yeah. Because I made changes and then this happened. It was a fake highlight. I think we gave, we gave England a game. Yeah, I think I think we did. We did more than I expected. We actually gave England a game. Clayton scoring on his debut. Putting the results aside, yeah, I think it was you know. Seemed to lose focus. Yeah, I shouldn't have said anything. Um, served to come off. Lee Grant didn't have a great game. To be fair, he's playing in League One for Exeter on loan. So there's not many of our players are actually Premier League players. And we managed to get a goal against England. So really, you know, or under 21s, beast, Bulgaria. It's this guy, Andrew Bachelor. He's the oh, okay, he's playing for under 21s now. He was in the under 19 squad when he came up for me. Um He's a similar type of player to Marcus Rashford, who's now 29. What is his penalty taking is 15 his feet? Free, I wouldn't say his free kicks are 14. But Vince Miller. Oh, I've completely forgot that he was in the team. Uh, remain upbeat. Troy Parrott's being watched by Newcastle. So yeah, we will be back in just a second for the game against Tunisia. Uh, group wise. We are now, after dropping to third, because of Kosovo getting a win against Iceland. Yeah. Oh, last minute winner. God damn it, Iceland. You could have done so much for us there. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm hoping now England beat Kosovo. Yeah, I hope England beat Kosovo convincingly. So when we play Kosovo and Armenia in our last two games, we're in the driving seat for second. Because if we beat, if we win those both, both those games, we should get second. Yeah. Anyway, see you guys in just a second for that. So don't go anywhere. All right, fellas. We are now back for the game against Tunisia. Um, in our group. England Kosovo drew, of course, because that's not what we wanted. And Armenia lost to Iceland. So as it stands, we have a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Um, England are 4-1-1. One, and one. So I can't imagine we're going to jump above them. On the who did they play last? Iceland, isn't it? Yeah, they play Armenia and Iceland last. We play Kosovo and Armenia. So there's a chance that... It's not going to happen. I was going to say there's a chance that England could slip up against the two bottom teams in the group. I, I don't see that happening. But we have a nice cheeky little friendly against Tunisia today. Uh, fully, almost fully rotated side. Not completely rotated. Uh, 10 changes for this game. Tierney starts in goal. Can only go for 45 minutes. Otherwise, uh, UCD. Yeah, UCD are going to freak out. Um, Osborne comes in at right back and Bull comes in at left back. Clayton starts this game. Um, Owen Brennan is the only player to play both these games. Oh, uh, McDonald might come on at some point just to give him an opportunity to play because he hasn't played yet. Uh, Miller is going to play as the box to box with Thompson alongside him as the deep lane playmaker. Um, Obafemi is going to play as a Rome Deuter because I haven't played with one of them since the beta when I played Salman Kalu. At Hertha, and he scored five in one game, um, but then didn't really do much after that at Romdider, and he retired at the end of the season. So, uh, Purcell plays the attack midfielder, and Callum O'Dowd comes in to play at the on the left wing because uh, Luca Connell played horrendously, and I'm going to start Noel Russell up front because Troy Parrott didn't really get involved in the last game. I know it was against England, but Martin Clayton scored, so, you know, uh, I think Troy Parrott, he's very hit and miss, I'd really like if he, um, 
if he did a bit more for the, with the with his opportunities. But I think he knows he's number one. So we're going to um, we're going to have to kind of push on a little bit and try and force him to realize that he, maybe he's not going to start every single game for Ireland. Uh, the Tunisia side is quite a strong side. I had a look at a couple of their players. Um, they definitely have a good bit of pedigree in them. So I'm a little weary, but I think it being a friendly, it's not that big of a deal if we lose. I'm hoping we don't. They're playing with a very structured 4-5-1 uh, and their, their lone striker is complete forward. So he's... I feel like he's going to be left kind of with the ball just being punted at him, kind of like a target man, based purely on how they're playing. I could be very wrong, and they're making it look like I'm very wrong. But at least we got the ball away there. Um, gets pinged away, but Tunisia are back attacking. One of the players was that. Thompson tried to get the ball away. Oh, bull, bull with the tackle, but not good enough. And then uh, Miller blocked it, and then Rafia just smashes it into the back of the net. Yeah. Disenchanted. Right, let's come on now, will ya? Um, there was a very interesting result as well in the qualifiers. Um, Moldova against Germany. It was 2-1 to Germany. So I was looking at it and I was like, that's a bit of an interesting result. That's not something you'd expect, you know, Moldova pushing Germany like that. But they did. So well done to him. Uh, no, Russell's only scored. I thought he was offside. Oh, but Femi held off his man from the bull free kick. It was a very strange free kick, but, you know, it's fine. Oh, but Femi just does his man, and Noel Russell just thinks it in, surrounded by six Tunisian players. And the five-star potential striker puts one in the back of the net, makes it one all just before half time. Purcell not having a great game. Bull not having a great game either. Uh, maybe friendly, but we're, lo or we're losing battles. Yeah, you're losing all the key battles. You need to show more, show more competitiveness out there in the second half. Ron Bull. You're, you're lazy. Look stressed. Well, that's very interesting. I'm going to bring on Joshin for the... Second half, and I just set him as a just a standard goalkeeper because he's not really, um, he's not really a sweeper keeper, shall we say? He's very much just a I'll stand in between these two metal things, and I won't move beyond that. Purcell, Odauda, Thompson, Miller, back to Thompson, and he's ooh. Keeper had to make a very, very good save there. Osborne whips it in, cleared, and Vince Miller, looking in the wrong direction, gets back and hacks his man down. That's what we want from our box-to-box um, -box midfielder. I'm trying to remember what position I'm playing him in, or what role I have him playing. Um... I'm looking now, I think Bull and Purcell are going to be the first ones to come off. Yeah, we're going to do a little bit of a tactic change here. So I'm not going to bring Grant on because Grant is tired. But we are going to go complete forward. And it is Troy Parrot up front time. And Vince Miller. Was it Vince? No. Bull can go off for Quinn. Is there anyone else? I wanted to, I'm gonna take off my, uh, Clayton for McDonald. Because as I said, McDonald hadn't played. Brennan might end up playing the full 180 minutes 
of both games because I don't really know do I have anyone I want to bring up for him. Osborne whips it in, Obafemi just puts it over. Um, we've made four substitutes now. Oh, okay, thought we only made three. I forgot we substituted the goalkeeper. Come on, let's get creative. Um, yeah, we'll take Vince Miller off for Josh Cullen. And is there anyone on the bench you want to bring on? Is there anyone on the pitch you want to take off? <laughs> um, not really, but I do want to make I want to make all my changes. I will leave leave the last change till the, like the eighty fifth minute, maybe. Or doubt as apprehensive. So we take him off. I'm actually going to bring on Lee Grant. I don't normally play him as a winger. But he's going to get the chance today. So show me why you should be playing regularly. Because to be fair, he's probably our best attacking midfielder. Thompson did. Oh, oh he was offside. <laughs> God damn it. I was like, if he scores from the first highlight of him being on the pitch as a left winger he's still playing as a left winger then i have to play him every every time because left wing is probably our weakest position at the minute um so we end one on not a great game not a terrible game uh, i'm gonna say luckily it was only a friendly Eh, nobody played fantastic. Nobody played too terribly. Not really going to pick on anybody for being poor, I suppose. Did I just see Igor Bishkin is after taking over at Hull? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Igor Bishkin. Anybody who used to football. Anybody who used to football, anybody who was a Premier League fan in two thousand, the early two thousands, would recognize him. He's had quite the career. Uh, milestones. He was manager. Ah, what's he doing in real life? He is the Rijeka manager. Then he went over to Leeds, Newcastle, Brighton, and now he's managing Hull. He took s almost seven months off. I remember him. He was brilliant. I used to love playing him as a... If I ever managed Liverpool in older FMs, I'd play him constantly. He was such a good rota or, um, utility player because he could play as... He was a decent centre-back. He was good. He was a decent centre midfielder. He was a good DM. I think he could play either left-back and right-back as well. So he was... Oh, very... Very handy. Haha. -ha. Um, so for the next episode for this series, we're going to be playing Kosovo and Armenia. They will be the most important games because if we don't qualify from that, we didn't even, we didn't even sell out against Tunisia. Um, if we don't beat both of these sides, we won't qualify for the Euros. Now, in seven, almost eight years managing Hungary, we failed to qualify for one tournament. And because of that, I quit and moved to Ireland. If we don't qualify for the first tournament with Ireland, I'll be very, very, very annoyed. Because with Hungary, we never got out of the European League Division C. And the first attempt with Ireland, we did it. So I want to make it to the Euros. So we have a tournament to play just before FM20 comes out. But that being said, if you have enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. If there's anything that you think we could do differently, leave it a comment down below to let me know what I could do uh, tactic-wise or um, personnel-wise. Is there some player that 
I've played in previous games that you think I should have picked for these two games that I should pick for the Kosovo Armenia game. Um, games we should play two, not just one. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching, fellas, and I will see you in the next one.